I preach you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So if you all missed last week, I gave you all amusing about how I've been noticing people in our community, not necessarily the church, but in the greater community, just acting ridiculous. Not being very charitable and doing all sorts of mean stuff, being more concerned with being correct than with being compassionate. And then it led me to this great epiphany, like, oh, I'm really bad at that. Um, And I'm sort of trained to do so. I went to seminary to learn all the right things. And when I'm so good at pointing out the sins of others, I always come to the conclusion that when it comes to those types of sins, I am the worst sinner of them all. And then the thing is, is those sort of ponderings, noticing the sins of others, realizing that through introspection that you're a sinner yourself, that is the luxury, the extreme luxury of being in a state of normal, of homeostasis. And then as I was preaching that, it was as if the very fabric of my existence was starting to pull and I realized that things were not normal and then I tried to deny it. I tried to be in a state of utter denial so that way I could keep on going and going and going and surely it's just a hiccup. And then on Monday morning, sure enough, it happened. I had a cold. Just so completely, utterly congested. My food lost most of its taste. All of the emotions I would normally have felt muted. The joy I felt felt a little bit less joyful. And I was down for the count for about three days. And then when you are in that altered sort of state, you crave normalcy. You pray for it. You get all sentimental for that time where you're just not constantly blowing your nose, where you can hear correctly, taste correctly, but things aren't normal when you have a cold. And then the weirdest thing happens, and I'm on the verge of it, so I haven't been like feeling sick for a couple of days, but there's still sort of the vestige of it, you know? That little reminder that, hey, you weren't normal. And then probably in the next couple of days, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to breathe through my nose, I'm going to feel a tremendous amount of thanksgiving for the fact that I can breathe through my nose, and I'm going to go back to stressing out about the dumbest sort of stuff, noticing my neighbors doing things that I don't like or noticing that I'm doing things that I don't like, and then realize that I'm just sort of programmed to be stressed out about something. And in today's gospel, we see all sorts of little miracles, little echoes, um, and the most bizarre sort of way of how people crave to be normal. Jesus is just beginning his ministry of going around and healing people, and it's Simon's mother-in-law. She has a fever, and she's in bed, and then they take Jesus to her, and then he grabs her and lifts her up, and then her fever's gone, and then it just says she starts to serve them, and then they go on to do the next thing. This is bizarre. This is really weird storytelling. Did you Did you not think this is sort of weird? This miracle sort of happens and she just starts serving him? And we could wax poetic about gender roles or whatever theological um, sort of expectations there are in this with sort of hidden meanings. But really the truth is this right there. When you have people over, you serve them. You give them crackers and charcuterie and all sorts of stuff. And then there is this very bizarre story that is unfolding in the gospel. The Son of God who came to proclaim the coming of the kingdom of God to give good news to those who are in need. He goes and heals this woman, the mother-in-law of one of his new friends. And then she's miraculously healed and returned to normal and she starts doing normal things. And then when we don't feel right. We crave those moments where we can breathe clear. When we get that terrible news that someone we love is sick or gone, when we find ourselves in extended seasons of being altered, we count down the days until we can get back 
to our normal life. But the thing is, is God made our biology. He made the synapses in your brains to be stressed out about something. So in those moments of normalcy, you will immediately take them for granted. And I know that I do time and time again. And then the beautiful irony with all of this, it is the times when you're not normal, that that brain that is hardwired to be stressed out, it is doing exactly what it's meant to do. It is going to get you to the other side of whatever crisis you're facing. Our brains are great at that. God made them to be great for that. The world is broken for reasons we don't know why. We can ponder, but we see sin, we see brokenness. It's as if the very cogs of creation have slipped and God has given us this tremendous gift of a brain that can figure out how to get through crises. And when we finally enter into that state of normal, we start to find crises around us even when they are not there. And we're about to enter into a season, a season of Lent. It's sort of our prescribed time of year where we acknowledge our altered state. We acknowledge our mortality. We acknowledge the fact that we're going to enter into those dark times in our lives. And we can rest assured that God has given us a community and a brain and a faith that can get us through those hard times. But when you find yourself in those rare moments where you're overanalyzing everything around us, but you can breathe through your nose and you know that your kids are safe and you don't have to take them to the doctor, when you don't have to remember when your next doctor's appointment is, then sometimes it's just good to take that deep breath through your nose and know that in that moment everything is as it should be, even your anxiety. Because our salvation begins with the created world around us. The very soil beneath our feet, the air that we put in our lungs, the water, the food that we drink has only existed in this time and place for a fraction of a second when given the entire history of the created world. And without it, we could not exist. Even within the history of humanity, we live in a time and place where we know who we are. We belong in this community and you can be held captive by this liturgy where it is taboo to get anything done. It is so beautifully countercultural to sit here and say, the only thing you must do is nothing. You don't even have to like what I'm saying or like what's going on or to understand it. You must just be. And so while you find yourselves in these times of being normal, or if you find yourself in a time of being stressed, know that this time is indeed made for you and without it, we could not exist. And breathe in deeply when you're able to and know that you are a beloved child of God because there will be normal days ahead that you will ruin with your own stress. There will be stressful days ahead that you will see through. But regardless, along the way, know that even the creation around you is screaming of your salvation. Amen.